Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good Monday night, Monday evening here along the West Coast in California. Uh, it is about 11 o'clock here, p.m., October 9th, 2023. We got the annular solar eclipse coming up here on the 14th. We'll jump into that uh, in the next couple days or so, give you guys a rundown on uh, where to see it the best and whatnot. The latest activity shows a 2.0 or 2.6. And a 2.0 up here in Alaska. Look at this map here, folks. Look at this. You guys see anything missing out here? Obviously, we have come to a complete halt with this westward pressure movement here against the uh, general areas along the western edge of the Pacific Plate. Adjacent plates as well. We have seen things kick up here across the east and adjacent plates. So we're looking at a little standstill out here. I don't know if we're... Uh, looking at maybe something bigger brewing out here, but everything has come to a halt out here. One earthquake way up north into the Kuro Kamchaka Trench earlier this afternoon. Uh, but for the most part, goodness, things have gone quiet out here across these areas. Uh, there's still some smaller quakes out here across the Indonesia Islands area and into the Java Trench. But for the most part, all the activity has been ramping up here over here. Well, <laughs> obviously, eastern areas of these adjacent plates that means the cocos plate the nazca plate let's go ahead and jump in and see what we got let's start down here into the south america region look at this 5.6 538 kilometers deep that is a super deep earthquake here well inland well away from the plate indicating that deeper movement that earthquake coming in just earlier this evening we'll watch for some further activity up here deeper activity does tend to strain the regions of the subduction zone. Also some activity there in Ecuador from earlier this morning. Middle America Trench down here um, off the coast of, uh, well, well, goodness, this is that little bay area, if I remember, the Gulf of, Gulf of Fonseca. This area had an earthquake swarm back uh, earlier, uh, a couple months ago. You guys remember that? Pretty intense earthquake swarm. Nothing really became of it. Just an earthquake swarm there for a few days and uh, kind of just went away. 4.4, 4, 192 kilometers deep there into the area of the Middle America Trench. Uh, prior to that little subduction zone earthquake, a little bit shallower though. 4.4 4 at 62 kilometers deep. So obviously some uh, movement taking place here across the areas of the Eastern Pacific Plate and adjacent plates. That includes, you know, right in this area right here. Uh, California, definitely seeing some slight uptick out here in the microquake department. Uh, I don't think we've seen anything above that. Uh, let's see what we got. 2.6 down on the Brawley Seismic Zone. Los Angeles, seen at 2.6 near Silver Lake, uh, the greater Los Angeles area here. 11 kilometers deep. And uh, let's see, up north... Well, I should say down south, the latest earthquake, a 2.5 down there south of the border. Uh, but for the most part, generally microquake activity, but somewhat of an uptick here in the multitude of quakes. Uh, mostly down in Southern California, that is. Uh, Northern California, seeing a handful of, uh, handful of earthquakes outside of the Clear Lake volcanic field. Very typical. Uh, this is, you know whole process involved if you watch this video these videos enough you'll know that this is very common we did see a little bit of swarming earlier uh this morning and uh the last one at 1.1 away from the swarming area down here near, near middleton they've been having a little bit of earthquake activity there in that region but it looks like things have calmed down for now the pacific northwest handful of smaller earthquakes nothing major going on uh looks as though texas down here some of these areas are getting hit pretty good uh, out in the oil fields of Texas. Uh, the last one, 3.2 outside of Pecos, Texas out here. Obviously, there's quite a bit of oil fields out here if you zoom in on any satellite imagery. And if you're flying over this area, you can see them pretty nicely. Uh, these are not swimming pools. These are not your, you know, <laughs> portals to, to the underworld. These are wastewater disposal ponds. And uh, there's one earthquake directly underneath this facility, a 3.2 that occurred earlier this evening. Uh, so these regions are getting hit kind of hard. Uh, also over here across the area of um, 
Falls City. This whole area is a huge oil field. Uh, and the latest one, at least in this area, shows a 4.0 earlier this morning. That is associated with some oil fields out there as well. And wastewater disposal ponds. Uh, backing out of here. Let's see here. There's that one earthquake earlier this morning in Elgin, South Carolina. Nothing has come of that yet. Uh, let's see what else we got here. The Big Island of Hawaii has been one of the areas that's just kind of continuing to kick up. Even though that swarm out here off the Izu, uh, Izu Trench area has dropped off since yesterday. Uh, there was a uh, about an hour or so yesterday where there, we've seen four, uh, about five or six earthquakes in the four to five range. But nothing since then and nothing along the entire western edge here of the Pacific Plate. It's rather odd. You know, these these are little clues that you could probably say that maybe something big time is brewing up here in the larger scale department. We'll have to watch that overnight. Uh, after all this activity we've seen here over the past few days and now just everything coming to a halt. I, I, that's a little on the eerie side. Hawaii, though, has kind of come in with a mix here. Uh, Kilauea Volcano, seeing quite a few ones and twos out there today. Uh, general movement across the Pahala area. A little bit of activity off the west coast here, the Big Island, 4.7 kilometers deep for a 2.2. Near Captain Cook, Hawaii. All right. Never been out there. I've never been to Hawaii. Uh, I think if I want to go, if I do decide to go, it's going to be on an island that is uh, sparsely populated. I like the uh, nature more than I do the scenery of vehicles and cars and buildings and stuff like that so yeah one of these days we'll get out there uh so earthquake activity continuing no major changes though to the uh kilauea volcano let's just double check though from the hvo the volcano is not erupting the area just south of the kilauea summit is showing signs of unrest due to the elevated earthquake activity uh, inflation at the summit of Kilauea remains at about its highest, highest level in over five years and has nearly returned to the level seen just before the last eruption back in September. Uh, looks like the tilt meter located just south of the summit is experiencing technical issues that the HVO is working to resolve. All right, aside from that, folks, I mean, it's just uh, it's a little eerily quiet out there across the areas of Western Pacific. What do we have going on beyond that? Some older movement quakes up in Poland. Not a whole lot of newer activity here across this area of the world. Some small twos and threes uh, across the area of Spain. And um, the Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet, though. We haven't really seen too many uh, divergent boundary earthquakes out there whole lot going on i notice as the earth tends to tilt back up north here for the fall seasons you know after obviously being uh in the summer solstice area we, we tilt back things start to kick back up here in the earthquake department we get odd earthquakes and odd swarms and whatnot and uh, i don't know if that has something to do with the swarm that's been going on across the izu trench or not but it's been uh been mind-boggling i would say um, and now that everything's come to a complete halt out here, it's a little eerie, and we'll just uh, we'll watch this overnight and see what takes place. Yellowstone National Park, super volcano, missing uh, been missing data out here for the past couple days or so. I'm not for sure what's going on with that. Um, specifically, I can check out this area with. Um, Let's see, these University of Utah stations right here. We should be able to pinpoint. Well, it looks like they are offline as well. Look at that. See that? Oh, there we go. They're back. Uh, now, these are the official seismograph stations there from the University of Utah monitoring the earthquake activity around Yellowstone National Park, but not on a scale where you can see all of the seismograph stations so we're just going to check one and see what we have here um well this what's the date yeah this is uh coming up on 24 hours old so no data coming in here 
We noticed that earlier this morning and last night actually as well. So I'm not for sure what's going on, but we're looking at a blackout of data uh, on the Yellowstone seismograph stations, the recorded data. I'm not seeing anything showing up on the Lake Yellowstone seismograph station. This is a live um, seismograph digital station, so nothing's showing up, but uh, there's no recorded data being produced there for the public. Not for sure why either. All right, uh, PNSN Network, that's going to be the Pacific North uh, West Seismic Network. This shows trimmer activity, and there is nothing. Zip zero for Cascadia trimmer. Space weather activity. We did see an M flare kicking up here in the last couple hours from the departing sunspot off on the western limb. Had a, uh, oh, let's see, what do we have? An M1.6 for the maximum there. Again, that's coming off of uh, 3451, this region up here on the western limb. It's continuing to grow, but also at the same time, it's continuing to get out of sight, out of mind, away from the Earth view. Uh, so anything that does blast off of there will probably not be Earth-directed uh, as far as CMEs go. The flare's been kicking up slightly. Uh, still watching this regional sunspot down here that's showing some complex structure within that entire core but for the most part these are the only two that are uh, i'm keeping my eye on for the most part um 95 chance for a c flare m flare at 35 percent chance x flare around five and there's your uh complex structured sunspots 3451 and 3460 which is this one right here no major roars in the forecast as far as the solar storms go continue to watch that though see if anything changes uh numerical models look at this massive low pressure system out here well above the great lakes well that's going to be uh sticking around for a little bit bringing some much cooler and i'm sure some welcome conditions out there across the eastern portion of the country here along the west coast we're also experiencing some nice cool temperatures i got uh 55 degrees here in my backyard at 11 o'clock at night, it's supposed to be dip down to about 50, uh, 51 or so. Uh, very enjoyable conditions. We are looking at uh, cooler temperatures remaining throughout the majority of the week. And um, looks like that's going to continue throughout the most, uh, the majority of the country out here. Now, there is a little bit of let me bring up the windy map here. I'm going to have to do a separate complete update on this for the, uh, uh, let's see, where's our uh, clouds for our eclipse that's happening here on the 14th. So the 14th is entering into Saturday morning, roughly about 8.09 Pacific time in the morning is when we start to experience the eclipse, uh, annular eclipse here. Uh, maximum time is around 9:15 or so, but I'm gonna I'm gonna bring that into a separate update, complete update. There's a little bit of uncertainty on if I'm gonna be able to see it out here, uh, here in Northern California. This is uh, 7 a.m. Saturday morning. I uh, noticed some cloud cover out here uh, across the area around 9 a.m., and that includes areas around Winnemucca, and so. Um, I had planned on going out here specifically to cover this annu annular eclipse, the Ring of Fire eclipse around Winnemucca, but I'm watching this closely. I don't want to drive six hours out there and um, not be able to see it. So I'm watching this storm system rather closely. This could uh, dampen the solar eclipse out here across the west coast, unfortunately. And it uh, looks like the spot... Well, we'll get into this a little bit closer probably on uh, Thursday I'll do a complete update on the solar eclipse where to see it what time what your view will be like from your location here in Northern California we're probably expecting about 80% coverage of the Sun not gonna be a ring of fire it's just gonna be a little sliver of a Sun the ring of fire is gonna be uh, roughly around Winnemucca up in the portions of Oregon and following a line down uh, through the desert southwest and into Texas area. But we'll get into that a little bit later on the uh, complete update. Uh, it is that time of year, unfortunately, where storms can come in. Low pressures and cloud cover can create 
Uh, some not, uh, you know, really not any viewable conditions there for the eclipse. But either way, I'll still be up to uh, see how dark it gets at uh, 9 in the morning. I'll definitely be live streaming it uh, if we have clear skies. All right, folks. Um, anything else major going on here? I really don't think so. National Data Buoy Center. Anything suspicious going on? No, no, uh, nothing at all. Things look pretty calm out here across the uh, the buoys of the world. All right, I'm out of here. Have yourself a, a wonderful Monday night probably Tuesday for the majority of the folks out there early Tuesday morning uh, we'll catch you guys back out here sometime uh, tomorrow Tuesday morning here uh, it, with everything going quiet right now uh, it's a good time to just be on guard and stay safe out there there's not a whole lot of newer activity across even New Zealand some of this movement there is from some older activity from earlier this morning and yesterday but uh, a little odd Right now, that teeter-totter effect in full swing here across the areas of basically the center portion of the globe southward. Not so much in Northern California, but I would definitely keep an eye here along the West Coast uh, for some movement. Catch you guys later. Have a good one. Peace out.